Which player is poised to take the biggest step up in 2023? All that and more this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked, 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 Locked On. Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. If you've ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your own football franchise, then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On, all in caps, in the game. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. Check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Landon, we've got some questions today. How are you doing first? Hey, it's Friday. We're getting questions. It's it's a pretty good start of the day. I'm excited. And we've got uh, less than two weeks before the NFL yeah. draft. At Lots to look time, forward to. Yeah, this time next week, we're going to be talking about the Cowboys' first-round pick, if they oh, make one. Boy, uh, we did just gracious. do a trade-back mock yesterday, which you should go and listen to. It's on YouTube, anywhere you get your podcast. But, Landon, today, <laughs> we're getting into questions. First one from Connor. He said, it's a feel-good Friday. Who takes the biggest step up this season for the Cowboys? Hmm. That's a good question. I, you know, I think one guy that I feel like has the, I, there's two guys that come to mind immediately. Um, and, and I think that I'm going to pick one and I'm, I'm assuming that you might pick the other. Um, uh, maybe not though. Uh, I'm going to say Sam Williams. Uh, I think wow. that Sam Williams, That's not the uh, guy I was going to pick. Go ahead. Okay, good. Okay, good. I, I, it's a guy who, uh, played with the mids, has a mids physical t- tools, uh, has incredible upside there. Uh, we saw as he was able to get on the field more and more, he was able to get more and more comfortable with what was happening and really started to show uh, a lot of the skill that we saw uh, that, 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 you know, really made him such a terror in the SEC his last year at Ole Miss. So um, I, I think that all that experience that he gained over his rookie year and, and is going to get parlayed into something special is next year. He's going to take a nice big step uh, and, and maybe even kind of, start really eating into some of DeMarcus Lawrence's uh, snaps next year uh, just because they, he's become so good and that they they can't really keep him off the field. I'm actually surprised that he played as much as he did as a rookie. And there were oh, yeah. so many flash plays, not only as a pass rusher, but as a run defender as yep. well. So I think that one makes a lot of sense, right? You're finally in a situation with a stable organization with the same defensive coordinator. <laughs> you kind of know your role. It does feel like if Sam, if, if Sam Williams is going to be a thing, it's probably going to happen this year, right? Yeah, yeah. If he's gonna, if he's going to live up to that hype, that the immense like expectations that I think that were kind of put on him, not not necessarily by his draft pick, but by the combination of his draft pick, all that athleticism, and then what we saw on the field, I think that that's that's what's yeah. informed our, our our hype here. Uh, if that's going to happen, I think he takes this big step this year, just because he, you know, he went from the SEC to the NFL. He did both of those things in stride, and now that he's, you know, kind of fully comfortable, yep. let, let's let's see what he can really do. Well, and also remember, last year was he played well, but it was also kind of a weird year for him. He had later in the year he had that car accident, which that's caused right. him to miss some games. Uh, did he have a concussion midway through the season, or I some kind of injury right. that was yep. that popped up? Assuming he can stay relatively healthy have a quiet off season I, I do think he has the potential to to make a huge huge leap who was the other guy that you were going to mention i was gonna say deron bland for, for similar reasons in that's funny sense. that's not either of my guys go ahead wow, okay uh, so deron bland i think you know first i won't go too far into this because i think it's very similar reasons young guy very talented has the has the uh, the traits uh, got a ton of experience last year as a rookie and i think when you get young players that get a lot of experience they 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 take the offseason to kind of absorb what happens to them. It makes film study that much easier for them because now they know what the standard is on the field. Uh, and and I think the guys like that usually make big jumps. So I think Bland was my other guy to mention. All right. So to avoid just picking 
every defensive player that was oh no drafted last year by the Cowboys. I mean, Damone Clark was the guy that I thought you were going to mention, right? Just because second year linebacker, he's healthy, he played last year. I mean, that's it's kind of a layup, right? Well, I mean, I figured that Damone Clark would be a nice little uh, transition for for our next question. But yes, uh, yes I, I do think that, and, and I think we can parlay it into. Damone Clark is another guy that absolutely, for the reasons that we mentioned for, for Bland and for Williams, is a guy that we think, I, at least I think, will take a very big step next year. And to answer the next question, I think that's partially why I am less interested in looking yeah. at uh, Drew Sanders or uh, some of these top rate, top, you know, higher end linebackers. Now, listen, I, I think we should have a conversation about Drew Sanders. Uh, we will. I finally- Don't worry. We will. And I, I finally got a chance to kind of circle back on some of that. I think that some of these guys that they're looking at, they are actually looking at, at as more than just linebackers, potentially. Like, I think they like some of these guys that ha- are linebackers that have some pass rushing traits. Uh, but I, I think they, they answer the kind of question why we aren't necessarily talking about some of these top end linebacker types is because I think we have a lot of faith that Deron, uh, the <laughs> see, I almost did it again. Damone Clark uh, uh, will take a big step and become a huge part yeah. of this defense next year. Uh, I agree. My my guy though that I'm picking is Chauncey Golston. So not a second God, another player, guy. but a guy, a guy yeah. going into year three. We didn't really see it for most of last year. I, I think he really struggled uh, the first yeah. half of the season, and we talked about it like. That was somebody that was very disappointing. We were hoping to see him take the next step. But over the final two or three games of the regular season and then into the playoffs where I don't think he was awesome by any stretch, but he played quite a bit and was fine. I kind of think going into year three, now that the Cowboys have found a role for him, he's 25 years old. I I could see him being a really valuable piece of this defensive line and him averaging – I don't know, 22 to 24 snaps a game. I I think what's important to remember here about his performance at the end of the season is, is just what a dire situation the Cowboys were in at defensive tackle at the point where he really stepped up. So no, he didn't necessarily perform like an all pro at the end of the year, but he was performing like a plus starter as a position, as a player that we were just hoping to get, rotational defensive tackle snaps out of so the fact that he was able to step up when the team really really needed him at the end of the year it's a very good indicator and i think honestly all the same things that we applied to the second year players applies to golson as well because his first season he didn't get a ton of snaps he didn't get a ton of opportunity and what when he was out there it wasn't great i think last year kind of served as his actual full dose of NFL playing time. And that is going to be a very similar process for him, absorbing all of that, Mm -hmm. taking in all those snaps that he took, watching himself on film, and and then being able to kind of project forward what he needs to do to kind of take the next step. That that, For all those same reasons that those other three guys that we mentioned are going to take steps, I think uh, Golson will as well. It's also not uncommon to see a defensive lineman do this, where year one – they're just playing at whatever size they played in college. Yeah. Year two is when they either bulk up or slim down. In Golston's case, he bulked up, right? I mean, he was significantly bigger. And now going into year three, he kind of knows how to play at that weight. I, I got to assume he's at like 280 right now. Is that fair? I think that's probably fair. And, and I think that, you know, to kind of go back to what you were saying, I think a lot of his issues early on too, I mean, part of it is just being a rookie and it's difficult transition, but I think part of it also was that the Cowboys struggled to find the correct fit for his role, yep. you know, for what they wanted him to do, what he does well combined with what they needed. Uh, and I think that what they discovered is that, you know, look, they were trying to ham fist a situation uh, of him being a, you know, defensive end who kicks inside sometimes. Yeah. I think that the reality is that he's probably the opposite. He's a defensive tackle who can play on the outside in certain functions. Uh, and that's where he really thrived. Yeah. I'm expecting all the guys that we mentioned, Golston, Sam Williams, Deron Bland, Damone Clark, all four of those guys to make a step up. And the truth is Landon, if two of those guys make a leap, yep. this defense is going to be absolutely insane because yep. These four, while Bland probably played the most of these four, they weren't really guys that they were relying on. So if you can get these guys to become solid to high-end starters, watch out. Uh, Let's answer some more Twitter questions next.
Today's episode is brought to you by the Ultimate Football GM app. You've heard us talk about this mobile game before, and if you ever thought that you'd make a good GM, you've got to give this game a try. It's not as easy as you think to create a dynasty. When you play Ultimate Football GM, you get to control and manage every strategic aspect of your team as you play through seasons and lead your team to glory trying to build a historic dynasty. With Ultimate Football GM, you're going to be responsible for controlling the destiny of your franchise by hiring the right coaches and coordinators, managing all the finances. You get to do free agency, the draft. There's going to be locker room issues that pop up. Players are going to want new contracts. You get to deal with all that kind of stuff in all the ups and downs of the season. All of this in a challenging but realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline, so you can play on the go as you want to and when you want to. I want to see some of your guys' teams. Please screenshot me your teams. I want to see how you're doing at yeah. Marcus underscore Mosier. Locked on Cowboy listeners, and this is important. Locked on Cowboy listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On all in caps in the game store. That is Locked On all in caps. So make sure you check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. That is ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM. Start your dynasty today. All right, Landon, let's get to some more questions. Let's actually stay right on the linebacker one. This one from Chip. He wants to know, why are we not talking more about taking a linebacker early, especially ones with pass rush ability such as Drew Sanders or Dayon Henley? I mean, I, I don't think we shouldn't have been. I mean, it's probably an oversight, honestly, because I, I, I think it's something that clearly they're looking into a little bit. And I do think that it's probably, you know, specific players, not so much the position of linebacker overall, because I don't know that every linebacker is, you know, a fit as a as a pass rusher as well. I think no, the guys I mean. that you mentioned, Sanders and Hanlon, have that. I think uh, the, the Clemson kid, Trenton, Trenton Samson. Simpson. Simpson, Simpson, yep. uh, it, it, Simpson eh? uh, has the uh, has has some ability there and some some pass rush ability. So I think that he's one of the reasons that there he's also being mentioned. So, I, you know, it's not like I think that all these linebackers are definitely eligible for for kind of the Cowboys view at, at, at let's say, the first two days of picks. Um, but I also think it goes back to kind of what we just discussed. Right. We, we have a lot of faith in uh, Clark. Mm-hmm. We know that we've got Leighton Van Der Esch coming back. This is a team that plays with uh, a safety at linebacker as it is right now. So it's not like there's an enormous need here. Um, uh, but I think that, that the Cowboys are one of those teams that will draft a year ahead of where their contracts are. Mm-hmm. So that they will need a linebacker next year. So I think it's, it's within striking distance. I think it's, it's a position that they could, uh, uh, that they could take for sure. Uh, but I, I do feel like, you know, kind of in the power ranking of Cowboys needs, it, it, it falls short of defensive tackle, wide receiver, yep, I agree. guard, you know, that sort of thing. So we did a show, I think it was on Wednesday, on surprise round one picks for the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. And we should have mentioned Drew Sanders. We I should have. Yeah, that was fair. an oversight by me. I, Drew Sanders is a 30 visit. He's an SEC player with production uh, who also has some versatility, right? Like yeah. he was an edge yeah. rusher at Alabama. He goes to Arkansas. He's a all, first team all American selection. He's first team all SEC. He's got a bunch of sacks. Like I could see a world in which Dan Quinn's like, you know what? He's another guy that we can use to get to the quarterback. He gives us more linebacker depth. We can find a role for him, yeah. even with Leighton Van Der Esch and Damone Clark on this roster. Yeah, I mean, just to get into the player a little bit, my only concern here is that, you know, he is sort of raw at the off linebacker position. Yes. I mean, he's in, he's good. He's got incredible athleticism. He made a ton of tackles last year. and And on top of that, like, you know, legitimately like for the first half of the season he was leading the sec in sacks and 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 that's including a a a conference that has will anderson and jalen carter yeah so uh yeah i i think that he has skills that depth like this isn't a guy that you're like why is this guy being discussed like this guy has legitimate skills was went to alabama transferred away because he he felt like uh anderson was kind of being the 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 focus there as far as pass Mm -hmm. rush he was more the drop end at, yeah. at Alabama, so he moves to uh, Arkansas, and then they move him off defensive end to to middle linebacker. And I think that was his decision. He wanted to move there, 
And then uh, and and then he just took to it really well. I mean, but there's still some instinct stuff there. That's all very development de- de- develop a, a bowl. I think he just needs to kind of learn his cues and, and his uh, you know his keys. Uh, but I do have concerns that like you have kind of two sort of raw off linebackers playing uh, playing off of each other. He's almost like you almost want somebody who's more of a full time linebacker or or at least is better on that side than the pass rusher side just to kind of counterbalance yeah. Parsons yeah. a little bit. That's my only concern there. But he is an incredible well, incredible player. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying the Cowboys should draft Drew Sanders in round one because I feel like that's a reach. And I feel like that's that's a little bit too high for him. But in terms of like for Drew Sanders, Dallas is the perfect spot, yeah, right? Because absolutely. I think he needs at least another year to learn how to play off the ball linebacker. Yes. Right? Because yes. he's so raw in, in that phase of his game. However, if you go to a team like Dallas, you don't have to start. And you have a defensive coordinator in Dan Quinn that knows how to use players like that. So – I think in terms of fit, Dallas is probably the absolute best spot for Sanders. Yeah, I guess I guess the way I would phrase, yeah, and I one thousand percent believe that yes, that's that Sanders' best chance is to go to, to Dallas with Dan Quinn. Yeah, I, I I guess what I would view it as is if they drafted Drew Sanders, I don't know that I would like view it as them adding an off ball linebacker, you know, no, it's like not, it's, it's a front it's, seven it's, player, right? It's like, yeah, it's like Parsons almost where you kind of have to put him to the side a little bit and still sort of work on filling out your off ball yes. linebacker yes. roster, because this isn't necessarily going to be uh, a guy that you are only going to want to rely on that yes. for, especially his rookie year. It's just unrealistic to, to think that he could have to expect him to have Parsons like rookie yeah. season. That's all. I agree. Um, I just want to mention Dayon Henley a little bit. I don't. Yeah, I don't know you how... love this guy. The Washington let me State tell you the story for, for yeah. really quickly on it. First of all, his dad is a, a music executive who worked with Snoop Dogg in Nipsey Hussle, right. which is pretty cool. Uh, his dad actually went to jail for like 12 years, but now he has a foundation where he works uh, with some underprivileged youth, which is awesome. But anyways, he was a pro style quarterback coming out of high school. Uh, didn't get a lot of offers, so he went to Nevada as a wide receiver, played a little bit at, at receiver there. In year two, they moved him to slot corner, and then from there they moved him to strong safety. Then they moved him to free safety. Then he got moved in 2021 to linebacker, and then this year he was uh, first-team All-Pac-12 at linebacker. Like, does li- literally everything, and if you read Dane Brugler's draft guide, he talks about like how uh, he just wants to play football. He just wants yeah. to be on the field. He'll play anywhere that you want him to. That guy can fly to the football. I mean, fly in a way that I haven't seen a linebacker fly to the football in a long, long time. He's six foot one, two hundred and thirty pounds, and ran a four five four. And his sideline to sideline speed is incredible. However, the thing I like the most about him, Landon, is. He is an awesome blitzer. Like he just has such mm-hmm. a good feel how to get to the quarterback and how to get around offensive linemen and running backs. I could see Dan Quinn being like, you know what? This looks a lot like Deion Jones coming out of LSU. Let's grab him in the second round and figure out a role for him. Yeah. I mean, I, and again, it makes some sense. Again, if, you, if you're getting guys that can come after the quarterback, then I think it makes sense to, to, to be targeting these guys high. Uh, and, and I think that all three of the ones that we mentioned, Simpson, um, this guy, and then uh, uh, I just blanked on the third Henley, guy, but Henley, Henley uh, all, uh, all kind of fit that mold of, of guys who can – oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Sanders was the third Sanders, guy. Sanders, yep. Henley, we just – yeah. So uh, uh, the, all three fit the mold of a guy that, you know, whether it's blitzing or actually, yep. you know, in Sanders' case, being an actual pass rusher, they can they could pressure the quarterback. And I think that's, yep. you know, for a first-round quarter uh, uh, linebacker, that's really key nowadays because that's such a valuable trait to have. His first year playing linebacker in college football, he led all uh, college linebackers interceptions with four. I mean, you like if <laughs> you want – we talk about this all the time. Oh, this guy has the coverage ability. You can play him on slot receivers. He legitimately can cover slot receivers because he's done it before in college. I, I He's not a round one guy, but round two, if you want some speed and athleticism, I think uh, Dayon Henley has it. And let's get to uh, another question right after this break. All right, Landon, one more question here. This yeah. one is from Cowboys Due Diligence, which I absolutely love this question. 
which position group has the most double dip draft potential, meaning the Cowboys could take two players at the same position in this draft? Well, uh, if they were so inclined, I could, I mean, I could easily see a couple of positions that were, they could cornerback is one. I That's think the one because, I thought of right away. Yes. I think, you know, because there's guys at the top that you could like, and then there's definitely guys later on. Cornerback is always a position where you could fill, like where there's room for more, right? There's always room for more. I think, you know, I think interior offensive line. Like, honestly, I think you could get a guy high, like, let's say you got a Vila or a Tipman or a, Sch- a Schlitz or, you know, one of these guys. And and then um, you wanted to get like a Zavala later or some of mm-hmm. these guys. I like some of the kind of interior guys or Mafi from from U- uh, UCLA. I like some of these guys that uh, a little bit later in the draft, too. When I if I don't make if I don't hit my my interior offensive line early, I always feel comfortable that there is a way to get a guy a little bit later. So if you wanted to get like a true center at, at one of the spots, like let's say Juice uh, from Penn State, a little bit later after mm-hmm. getting a guard earlier, you could easily do that. Uh, and then I think the only other position that I I mean that, I'm sorry I guess I already mentioned wide receiver right wide mm-hmm. wide receivers one another one that let's say you get like a body style type a and then you wanted to hit another body style a little bit later you could definitely do that like let's say you get a uh a, a tank dell or or a, a zay flowers early and then later you wanted to get somebody like uh you know cedric tillman or michael wilson right mm-hmm. a guy that who can function as a different type of wide receiver and then also potentially give you some special teams work as well. Right. I could, th- those are, that's another position I could see that could be a double dip candidate. I'm looking at positions where the, the entire room could be wiped out in a year because of contracts mm. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And to me, there's one that's, I mean, pretty easy to see it's running back, right? That's true. Tony yeah. Pollard on the, the last year of his contract playing on the franchise tag. Plus we've seen the Cowboys do this like multiple yeah. times over the last 20 years, right? There was one year where they took Felix Jones and then Tashar Choice later. There was another draft where they took Ezekiel Elliott and then Darius Jackson. Uh, we, we've seen them. There was another one they took Bo Scarborough late, and I don't remember who the other running back was. But we've seen the Cowboys do this before, and I'm not advocating for this, but <laughs> let's say you draft B. John Robinson at 27 or wherever the Cowboys draft, 26, right? And then we get to day three and Roshan Johnson still on the board or Kendra Miller, like in the fifth round or Zach Evans, who you maybe had a third round grade on. Why not? Like just if you're going to, if you're going to do this at running back, like let's really not spend any money and just draft draft, you know, spend draft picks on the position. Well, I'll, I'll even take it one further. If the Cowboys, I mean, first of all, I think we are both in agreement that the Cowboys walk away from this draft with the running back. Like I think oh, that's without a doubt. kind of not in yeah. this d- debate. No. I, I think that it's possible that they walk away f- from the draft with the running back. And then, then at the very least they turn around and pay some undrafted free agent uh, running back a whole money. bunch yeah. of money, yeah. you know, like so that someone that they anticipate that, that may make their ro- like they they can basically guarantee to make their roster uh, that kind of undrafted guaranteed free agent money like you know twenty five thousand yeah. dollars a drafted free agent sure. signing because I, I think that I think that the, the numbers just alone uh, require you to add more talent to that room. Well, yeah, because I mean you have Tony Pollard, <laughs> Ronald Jones, and Malik Davis are currently under <laughs> roster. That's it. Yeah, and Rico, it's right? Is Rico, well, is, is Rico? Yes, yeah. Rico well, I mean, Rico but, but that's the thing is Rico's coming off of an injury. So like Pollard's you know, coming off an injury. Pollard is coming off an injury. Davis is, is not, it, you got some experience and you like what you saw, but certainly isn't, you know, uh, it, is it stopping you from signing Ronald Jones? You know? So yeah, there's not a ton of experience and there's lots of opportunity in this room and you want young running back. So uh, drafting and then maybe double, either double dipping or, or signing a, a high end UDFA yeah. at the end. That seems very likely. And I don't know how likely like this scenario would be, but like, let's say Gibbs fell to you in the second round, you draft Gibbs, but you know, you still, you have Pollard and Gibbs. You need somebody that can run between the tackles a little bit. Maybe that's where you draft, you know, your Zach Evans or your Roshan Johnson or your Kendra Miller on day three. Um, I actually just thought of another time the Cowboys did this. They took Tony Pollard and Mike Weber 
in the same that's draft right. back in that's 2019. Right. So they do have a history of doing this. I, I won't be shocked at all if they draft multiple running backs or, as you said, draft a running back on day two and then give a boatload of money to the top UDFA running back available. And, and don't forget, this is a team that in the past, you know, and 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 with McCarthy's history too, it's just been a while for the Cowboys. They have used three running backs as a rotation, not not ne- not like you know a, a split backs situation, but truly using three running backs in a rotation. Um, you know, so I, I think the idea of drafting the third running back after drafting a se- the second running back in yeah. the same draft, I don't think it's unrealistic. Not at all. Uh, all right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every single day, uh, every day or t- next Monday. Lane and I are going to be talking about some of these uh, running backs. We we might even disagree on one of these running backs because I got a feeling you like one of these guys a Uh-oh. lot, and I I know that I uh, I've got a big man crush on uh, a certain running back from the SEC that we're going to talk. Oh about. yeah, Just a little bit of a teaser it. for next Monday, so you're going to want to make sure you check out that show. Go check out the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Please go download, subscribe on YouTube. Lane, guys, we real quick we just announced it on Twitter, but. Thank you. We just hit a million views on YouTube. We're about to talk about YouTube. So I just wanted to kind of personally thank out. I know Marcus feels the same way. Mm-hmm. Thank you all so much. And, and we appreciate it. Please keep watching. We'll keep making them. Uh, we appreciate that for sure. Go follow Landon on Twitter at Nicole BCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you guys right back here on Monday.